if you're kind of wondering why this is all tilted, this is so I can get the best optimal agony, agony, wow, avenue by which I can start to explain some of this stuff. Okay, and where is my close enough? Okay, I'm not sure if it's doing it all backward or what the what. We're gonna go with that. Okay. So basically, this is going to be part of a first little series, um, how to Pathfinder. A couple things that you will need. This really isn't needed. It's basically a GM screen. It's more for me than anybody. And it's usually, it's a really good, helpful tool when it comes to setting things up. Um, as you can see here, it's got all kinds of neat little um, graphs and so on, or as far as like combat tables, all that other good stuff. Just basic stuff that I would need in order to run things a little bit more efficiently. I love this thing. Um, finally managed to actually get off my butt and get one, but that's neither here nor there. Basically, it's kind of set up kind of like so. It's green. It keeps all my nice little books and stuff behind it. You can't see squat behind it. But I can see everything, so you can't like cheat and see what I'm doing. Of course, if you have a play mat like this, this is handy because you can see the little grid squares on there, and that's where your uh, characters and such will move on. Uh, a character can be anything represented by anything from like a stone or a counter or like a bottle cap. In this case, we're going to use a nickel. It fits. It's nice. And it's now sitting in a five foot square. That's basically what each one of these will represent. So basically, a ten foot by ten foot room will be this by this. And I'll take these out here in just a moment. That's what these are for because this is a wonderful little uh, dry erase board, which is why it's also got the spray and such. It's also handy to have. You don't have to have one to play at the gaming table, but if you're a DM or something, I would absolutely recommend it just because it's easier, it gives people something to look at, and really I don't recommend bringing out graph paper for that. Uh, graph paper is excellent for planning, but not really for the actual gameplay. I'm going to try and keep this as condensed as possible, and of course we're going to go with markers. So we're going to set up a eh, 15 by 15. And we'll put the door at a really weird spot. There. So we'll even put this guy inside of it. And there you go. He's inside a 15 by 15 foot space. Usually this is about the way certain things go. You can round off the corners and stuff if you want to. It really doesn't matter for a whole lot. Uh, most big characters, like a big, like a larger character, will actually be a five or not a ten by ten square instead of a five by five. And a huge character would be something like that in dimension. And they have a pretty decent reach, which I'll get into that here in just a moment too. Um, actually, no, one is, we might as well get into that now. If we're talking into like reach characters wise, how far they can hit and such, reach is generally a five foot space uh, adjacent. That means next to you. So if this character is here, basically every single one of these squares around is where your character can basically reach with a basic attack. There you go. Explained in a little bit. Okay. So we're going to get into how to set up characters and some things you also need. Of course, this is good for having a personal character journal on the side. You can keep track of any notes, any crazy thing that's going on, any suspicions you have about characters. Yes, even your own party members. Because... Anything can happen in a game. Anything. And of course, something like these. These are actually more for doodles and such, but a good pencil, usually a number two pencil, is a godsend. You'll want to keep that. And you'll want to do most of your character sheet stuff in pencil. Do not usually do it in pen. And speaking of character sheets, there you go. I've got one right here. You will definitely need that. You can either print them out or you can find them. Either way. I would not recommend using the one that's actually in the core book. 
um, which I can't really bring up the PDFs here, but I have copies of the PDFs. And if people are interested, I can usually uh, find my, find their my that I can send them to you through email. There we go. Let's just keep it simple and sweet. That way you don't have to worry about paying an arm and a leg. Cool, right? Yeah, I thought so too. You're welcome, by the way. Um, okay. So rather than deface a book and such, and you can print this out and so on, and you're good. Um, what else? Oh, yes, and the most important one, dice. There are any number of little dice here. You can see them all in there, and of course a little moonstone for extra luck, because why not? Um, the other thing is, if you have a cell phone, um, there is a handy little, it's called Masterwork Tools. Um, Pathfinder open source and it's got a lot of the basic stuff in there that you can look at for reference So I'm just going to kind of go down the list and we're going to I'm going to create a character here um, I'm going to do it with uh, we're going to just make it a human Because humans are easy to figure and for good starting characters of course as you see here I'm pulling it up on my cell phone because why not? Come on there we go uh, races and brings up skills because my cell phone races, core races, and then humans. So, I guess actually, no, the first thing we need to do here is I will whip out the dice because. Why not? Let's go over the dice. And that's my little moonstone for luck. These here are your standard six sided dice. You will find them in any board game. Okay? Any board game will have them. Basically, they're used for attributes and a couple of other different roles on the side. Um, in the beginning levels, at the very least, you will see this one a lot. It is a four sided triangle dice. And it is read by simply you roll it, and then you look at the top, which in this case is a 2. I have some other ones like D3s and such that are non-standard dice, but we won't get into that because you won't see a whole lot of them. Um, I've already used the D6s. Which one's next? We'll go with the D8. Again, roll it. The one that pops up showing up face-wise, so in this case it's a 1. There you go. Um, tens, again, more of a top-sided. That one's a three because, again, it's the one that pops up. Now, in this case, where you will see it's either with a nine or a six, it has the underline under it to designate which is which. Makes it very handy. D12, you won't see a whole lot of, but it's there. Um, D20, you will see a lot of because you use these for skills, rolls, and such, which I'll get into that here in just a moment in, in a few. And um, this one is going to be a percentile dice, which I showed you the D10 before. This is percentile dice, so if you're ever rolling, you could either, you could roll a 1D100, which I actually have, but I'm not going to bring that out right now. Or you could roll one or 2D10, in which case, here you go, it's just easier that way. So in this case, we have a 40, and we have a 5. So that was a 45%. Usually what will happen is you will have to either meet or beat a particular target number, like 60%, you would either have to meet or be greater than, or in some games they actually prefer you to go under that. Dark Heresy is usually one of those. You usually have to get under the skill set number. And then you get a certain amount of um, over points, basically, for every 10 over. So if I rolled, if my target number was a 20, for instance, and I just rolled a 45 there, for every 10, you get an extra particular effect, which in this case would be um, two tiers or two successes. If you were rolling a contest, it would basically be um, two successes over whatever they have, which I can get into that later as well. So now that I've basically covered the dice, we're going to get into how much time do I have on here? Character creation. And one of the basic things is, of course, this right here. You need your 46 dice. And why is that? Because we're going to roll some stats. Now, of course, pencil is always handy. 
Um, do not put stats down in particular. Your stats are going to be right here, Strength, Dex, Con, Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma. Those are often based on whatever class you pretty well want. So basically we're going to roll them first and then afterwards we'll assign, assign them. Um, so basically we'll, we'll go for a few, a few things like um, character name. We're just going to call him... Why not? I'll use an old character name. Onion Yayo. Which was a spoof off Onion, by the way, for those of you strange Windia folks that did not know that. I have a very curious sense of humor. And this was the angel that was devoted to Zephon, or no, that was a part of Zephon's army, and was devoted to Damien because he viewed him in a weird way as his creator and he was liberating him. Um, alignments can be variable, uh, it depends basically on what kind of character you're playing. Um, going right down the list, it usually goes on a sliding scale from, um, on one axis, it's from chaotic to, to lawful which basically means you're more going absolutely crazy to um, to abiding the law in its extremes. So one extreme or the other in that case. Or true neutral was it, or neutral which is in right smack dab in the middle. Um, and then on the other hand, your access of good or evil. A chaotic good person may be more of an anarchist, or even a chaotic neutral. They just do things in the, on the crypts of the flip side. Chaotic evil basically lives to screw up everything around it. They're just crazy. Um, so going down the list, uh, let's see. Lawful good. Those are more of your paladin types, those bastions of good and so on. They hold down to the law to the letter for the most part. And they punish... Um, transgressors mercilessly for the most part. Uh, lawful neutral is neither really good or evil. They're kind of in the middle of the fence, but again, they mostly obey are, are those that just kind of obey and keep within the laws. They don't like to stick outside of the laws. Uh, lawful evil. These are evildoers that may either manipulate the laws to their own ends, or they will work with their evil deeds within the ledger of the law. You will see a lot of devils in the Pathfinder series that are basically lawful evil. And you have to be careful. They're the ones that like to play with contracts. And you never know what you're quite getting into. Devils in the details? You have no idea. Oh, sideways. Sideways segues? No, there is not any actual selling of your soul or conjuring up real or uh, demonic entities of any sort. You can fight them, however, and your characters can summon them up. I just wouldn't recommend it. So, I as far as, like, balancing it with faith, you really don't have to worry about that. So, uh, neutral good. You're basically in the middle of the fence, but a good and, and a good guy on top of it. True neutral. You're just basically all around. You're not one way or the other when it comes to one thing or another. It just depends on the situation. And... Neutral evil is basically you do whatever suits your purpose. You're not really a bad guy per se, but people will have to watch you because you're not really trustworthy either. As long as it suits your purpose, you help out. The moment it doesn't, you're the first person to screw them over and point and laugh at them and then charge tickets for the occasion afterwards. Evils are pretty screwed up in this, if you haven't noticed. Okay, so chaotic good. Again, anarchic types or anti-heroes. Batman would probably be a, a, a chaotic good. Um, chaotic neutral is like most elves and such. They're kind of middle of the road, but they tend more to do things on a whim, as opposed to being strict and orderly. Yes, an obsessive type, compulsive type, might actually wind up being a lawful one because they have a set system. And then, of course, there is... Chaotic neutral. Or no, no, chaotic evil. Chaotic evil, which is basically most demons. And they just exist to destroy stuff. You never know what they're going to do next. They are always predictable, unpredictable. They are wild. And they are crazy. And because this is nearing 15 minutes, I'm going to stop it right there. And then I'll go on to the next thing.